notice for today. Please join me in the Pledge of Allegiance. Thank you. May we have roll call, please? Yes. Councilmember Wong? Here. Councilmember Yudi? Here. Ooh, Councilmember Yudi, we couldn't hear you. Here. Oh. Here. Uh -uh. Here. <laughs> <laughs> you got a thumbs up from me. Is it loud enough from our end? I can hear you fine. Can you hear me? Still can't we still you. can't hear you, Councilmember Yudi. Yeah. Can you hear me now? Ooh, okay, I can there. barely hear you. Might be better if he turns off his, if he takes off his earbuds. Perhaps without the earbuds, if that's possible. Uh, well, let's try this. Is this better now? Yes. Yeah. Okay. Or is this better? This is without the earbuds, speaker. This is with the headset. Council member, we still can't hear you. Uh, I, do I need to just yell louder? Barely. Okay. Perhaps okay. we can have another check after we go yeah. through the yeah. preliminaries. Okay. Vice Mayor Tolt. Present. Mayor Jacobowski. Here. Thank you. And um, are we expecting Councilwoman Shepherd Romy? I think presume so. so. I okay. Presume so. Thank you. Uh, the agenda is posted 72 hours prior to each regular meeting at the following locations City Hall, Crowell Public Library, and the Stoneman Building. The agenda is also posted on the city's website. The city welcomes public input. At this time, the public may address the city council on items that are not on the agenda. Pursuant to state law, the city council may not discuss or take action on issues not on the meeting agenda. Please note that all comments are limited to two minutes and will be timed by city staff. I would now like to ask city clerk Baker to explain how the public comment will work. Thank you, Mayor. For each item on the agenda, there'll be time for public comment. We'll accept comments in three ways. First, we will take in-person comments for each item. Please fill out a speaker card and turn it into me if you wish to speak on an item. There's a countdown timer to the left of the public microphone for, to keep track of your remaining time. We'll then ask for comments from our Zoom participants. When we ask for public comments via Zoom, there are two ways you can let us know you would like to speak. First, you can use the raised hand feature, which is a button that's found by clicking on participants and then clicking on raised hand on the bottom right side of the screen. Please do not use this feature until we have asked for public comment or else we may not see it or know which item you're asking to speak on. As a second option, you can send a message using the chat box saying you'd like to speak on this particular agenda item. Comments will be accepted only until the end of the public comment period for that item. Last, I will then read into the record any public comments received by email for that particular item. Due to technical limitations associated with gathering, printing, and sorting email public comment, the city has instituted a 3 p.m. cutoff the day before Friday city council meetings for emailed public comments. This is to ensure there is sufficient time to gather and present the emailed comments at the city council meeting. Any comments received after 3 p.m. the day before Friday city council meeting will be included in the public comment record but will not be read at the meeting. Thank you. Thank you. Uh, is there anyone present who wishes to speak at this time? Seeing no one, do we have anyone electronically wishing to speak? Uh, Madam Mayor, apologies. Um, City Clerk Baker, Councilmember Yudi says he's called in on his cell. If you could unmute him there, he might be able to join us audio. Okay. There we go. Thank you. Did that work better now? It's not any better. Huh. Um, are there any staff people that are currently on Zoom that we could test and ask to speak just to see if it's Councilmember? member if it's us yeah angie could you possibly <laughs> chime in to help test us um i can hear everyone who's on okay. it's us because angie just so it's it's us council member it's us um yeah. i'm and not then, sure what we're going to do to fix that but it's not on your end yeah and then i did get a comment that everybody on zoom can hear him just fine <laughs> oh, oh interesting so That's they can all hear everybody helpful. fine so, so it's a speaker us. issue yeah can you hear me now like I can, I like I don't know if where I'm hearing it from. 
I don't think it's coming through the speaker. Um, are there are there any people on Zoom who want to do public comment? No, I do not have any raised hand for public comment at this time. All right, we might be able to roll into item one um, while we try to figure the speakers out. Sure, thank you. And let the record reflect that Councilwoman Shepherd Romy is present. Okay, so uh, do we have a motion and a second to waive further readings, please? So moved. I will okay. second. Okay, roll call. Council Member Wong? Yes. Council Member Shepherd Romy? Yes. Council Member Yudi? Yes. Can you nod here. or thumbs up? Yes. No. yes. <laughs> <laughs> Vice Mayor Talt? Yes. Mayor Jacobowski? Yes. Motion passes. <laughs> Thank you. Um, we will continue to work on our technical issue um, and we will begin with our new business, um, the adoption of the ordinance um, amending the city code. Uh, may we have a presentation, please, from City Clerk Baker? Yes, thank you, Mayor and Council. Um, this item would normally come to you as a consent item, uh, but we wanted it to be able to go into effect prior to the new term start in June. So we brought it to you today. Um, the change from last meeting was to add back in the alternate positions for the Library Board of Trustees. Otherwise, it's exactly the same as what you've seen before. And I'm available for any questions if you've had any. Thank you. Um, I'd like to begin with questions from council members, please. Uh, <coughs> excuse me, Council Member Huang, any questions? No, thank you. Okay. Councilwoman Shepherd Romy, or do you need a minute? No, I'm fine. Thank Good. you. It was a garage door. I was trapped at home. So <laughs> <laughs> I had to actually do it by hand. So that was a little apologize um, from my tardiness. I did have a question. So the alternate positions were refilled with the same terms and everything else. Completely as that just yeah. previously existed yes. because I know there's a difference in the um thank you very yes. much. That was completely the same. from the um terms. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Uh let's see if we can get something from Council Member Yudi. No. no. Um if you would like to um chat in with any questions, I can come back can to you. Text up. Is that a possibility? Uh, yes, Council Member, if you if you have questions or comments and you have the ability to chat them or text them into the Zoom, you can do that. Otherwise, if you'd like to send them directly to me, I can read them uh, into he, the record. He just sent into the chat. No questions. Fantastic. <laughs> Thank you. Very good. Uh, Vice Mayor Tal. No questions. Okay, I have one. Thank you. Um, under meetings of zero two point zero eight zero six uh eight of 110 the planning commission shall meet in each and every calendar month um historically the planning commission has been dark in november um may i ask council if we need to address that or our attorney i'm sorry uh or if it's okay as written yeah, so um, actually in the code for all of the boards, even for council, we don't highlight months that we may go dark. Simply what we do is we post a no cancel cancellation notice to the boards and around the city that inform people that it's not there. Plus and it, it says in here that we establish it by resolution. So we're not resolving, we're just putting it in the code. And I was incorrect on that. In November, the meeting week has changed and it is dark in December. And in that we just... Be do a cancellation and then technically a special posting and that's how we solve that issue so that's for everybody okay yeah. that makes good sense thank you uh do we have any comments from the public just giving a moment to see if there's a raised hand there's no request for comment from this okay and uh i'll bring this back to the council for discussion no. uh council member juan no any no comments thank you Thank you. Councilwoman Shepard Romy, any discussion? Uh, my only concern with this is just we need to monitor it to see if there's an issue because of the earlier time. I understand the reasons, but some um, committee members or commission members have remarked that it will be hard, depending on commutes, for some people who work for one to uh, take these positions. So I just would like us to revisit that in like a year and see if it affected recruitment this year. Okay, good point. Thank you so much. Uh, Council Member Udi, any discussion? No discussion. Vice Mayor Tall? No discussion. I have none uh, myself. Uh, do I have a motion and a second? Second. 
I move to waive full reading and adopt by title only ordinance number 0-22-1387 and an ordinance of the city commission of the city of San Marino amending the city code to align board and commission term start dates, adjust board and commission meeting times and eliminate the alternate positions for the public safety commission and approve resolution number R-22-10. Thank you. A second, please. Second. Thank you. Roll call. Councilmember Wong? Yes. Councilmember Shepard Rami? Yes. Councilmember Yudi? Thumbs up. <laughs> Vice Mayor Talt? Yes. Mayor Jacobowski? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you very much. Okay, moving on to item two. Um, this is with our amended agenda. So at this point, we are with the approval of the agreement um, with amendment number four with ITERIS. Um, may I have a presentation from Interim Director Newman, please? Thank you. Good morning, Honorable Mayor and Council. The item for your consideration today is an extension to an existing contract at no cost. The uh, consultant continues to work on a, the traffic study and the three component, the major components within that document. So I would anticipate staff will see a draft sometime in June. We'd be at uh, Public Safety Commission sometime in August and in Council later this year. And with that, I'll take any questions. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Udy, do you have a need to send in anything? No. Uh, Councilwoman Shepard Romy? Uh, I have two questions. Thank you. Um, the first is whether somebody is working, whether it's a public safety commission or getting updates, or somebody in your department is working with the. Um, Iteris, Iteris, I'm Iteris. Iteris. Yeah. We had a um, meeting with right. them in anticipation of this discussion. I wanted to make sure that they're still going with the comments that we received from, from council several months back. Thank you. And they are, they are working on that. Okay, and keeping on track because we did have a list of fairly yeah. specific, and I yeah. know it's a lot for you to jump into, but this had been going for a while and, and um, additional work needed to be done. So. Yeah, I was able to. Uh, to watch the uh, council meeting where you, you gave them feedback or the council gave feedback. So I'm aware of the comments and the concerns and okay. in reviewing the draft, I've got some of the very same. So thank you. Yeah, we are very closely watching them. Okay, so it's being managed and, and um, as well then, it, so I understand, are they doing any additional work in terms of, I mean, I know they're doing internal work to, to answer and, and bring forward some of the claims, but they are they doing any field work, so to speak? I don't know what the correct language is, but counts in certain areas or at certain intersections because there was a lot missed in that initial analysis. And I don't know that they even have the raw data with, to address some of our concerns. So I know they've got select intersections. Okay. I have not had the opportunity to get into the, the weeds on sure. how they pick those or what's the data there. I do know they've done the um, public comment portion and they're analyzing that data. So I would anticipate you would need, or we would need more data to go forward as part of the study before we present it back to council and the, and the public safety commission. All right, and that will be part of this and, and your yes. management of the process. Yes. Thank you very much. Thank you. Thank you, ma'am. Uh, Council Member Huang? Uh, no, question. thank you. Okay, uh, Vice Mayor Tal? I have none, thank you very much. And I have no questions either. At this point, I'd like to open it up to the public. Um, do we have any questions on this item? Actually, Council Member Yudi is raising his hand. Oh, no, you're uh, good. Okay, he's fine. <laughs> <laughs> I'll take that back. Never mind. He remains <laughs> mute. <laughs> Will you give one moment to see if the raised hand? No, no request for comment on this item. Okay, thank you. At this point, I'd like to bring it back for any further discussion. Uh, Council Member Yudi, anything you'd like to not say? <laughs> Nothing? <laughs> okay. Um, Council Member Huang? I'm sorry. Uh, you, uh, we're back for discussion. Is there anything further you'd like no, to no, say? No, no, no comments. Uh, Council Member Shepard Romy, anything further? No, I appreciate um, the management that we're going to get from um, Interim Director um, Newman uh, on this subject, and I hope that it, we get a better product in the end. Thank you very much. Thank you. Vice Mayor Talk? I have no further comments. I'm joining uh, Council Member Yudi. <laughs> you're, you're welcome to just do thumbs up as we move through the meeting. And I have none either. Um, would someone like to make a motion, please? Uh, 
We're all looking, looking for that page. Okay. I, my apologies. Uh, I move to approve amendment number four to the professional services agreement with uh, ITERIS, which will extend the agreement through April 30th, 2023, for the completion of the citywide traffic circulation study and authorize the city manager to execute the amendment on behalf of the city. Thank you. A second? I'll second. Roll call, please. Council Member Wong? Yes. Council Member Shepard Rami? Yes. Council Member Yudi? Thumbs up. Vice Mayor Talt? Yes. <laughs> Mayor Jacobowski? Yes. Motion passes. Thank you. Okay, we are moving on to Mayor, item. Mayor, if I yes. may, um, we, we would like to try a solution if please. we could before going please. to the budget. Okay. Do you want to let's, let's try one more time to ask speak? Okay. All right, Council Member Yudi, could you one more time try and speak with where we are in the current Superman. situation? I am unmuted now. Can you hear me through my speaker? We're going to try one more thing. So go ahead and stay unmuted. Hold. I am unmuted again. Can you hear me? He's talking. Right He's now, so. Can you hear me? You might need to unplug it though. Yeah, it's pretty simple. Okay, go ahead again, Councilman Reed. Should I try again? Can you hear me now? Can you hear me now? Yeah. Should I be a vanquilatrist? <laughs> I'll try my desk. He's coming in. They're coming in straight from the laptop instead of to the speaker system. Right, it's see if we'll get a mic to help amplify that some more. I can also call in on my cell phone if that would be better. Can you hear me now? I just plugged in my uh, headset. Yep, you're good. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Are we okay going forward? <laughs> thank you. Uh, you've got to move. <laughs> Please take your hat off. I, I I almost had more words than Stephen Wong in this meeting. <laughs> okay. um, we are now at item uh, number three, the presentation for the fiscal year 22-23 proposed operating budget by uh, Fire Community Services and possible communication of the department. Um, May we please have opening remarks from City Manager Marlowe and Director Chung. Absolutely. Thank you so much, Mayor and Council. We are back again for budget conversations. Uh, as you recall, you did complete all of the other departments last week. Thank you so much. I know that that was a long meeting, but we got some very good feedback from you. We appreciate it. We are here today to conclude the draft process, and that is the final two operating departments of fire and community services. So Finance Director Chung, uh, He's taken off his IT director hat. We'll uh, give you some high level comments about the budget again to frame our discussion. And then you'll hear a brief presentation from Fire uh, about that budget. And then we'll have a presentation from Community Services. I just want to take a moment and speak about Community Services uh, in general. As you know, several years ago uh, in April of 2020 was the last time that the council discussed the community services programming as a whole. At that time, the council's consensus was to reduce the program down, especially in terms of contract classes and new program offerings, to expand community participation and engagement offerings, community improvement, in other words, to move to outsource aquatics and to move to outsource preschool. In the intervening two years, COVID happened, of course, and is still happening as well. And we have changed some of the policies that we had going forward. Obviously, as council knows, just a couple of short months ago, you reverse course on aquatics because we tried outsourcing it. It did not meet our standards. And so we made a decision to bring that back in. And that was a decision that you authorized uh, a month or so ago. In terms of preschool, <clears throat> we thought that preschool was going to end up being uh, essentially outsourced to the school district who had shown an interest in offering a preschool programming. There were a number of reasons that that effort got derailed on the school district side, although I'm here to report to you that they are picking up their interest again. Thank you. Uh, and <laughs> maybe that's preschool calling now, uh, and are considering uh, maybe picking up the idea of, of offering preschool as well. Um, <clears throat> Community-wide programming has increased uh, dramatically from before. The most notable was our Trump Retreat event, which was the first time ever last October, which had incredible attendance, and uh, our egg hunt just a few short weeks ago, which had more attendance than usual. So we are moving forward in that direction. Um, <clears throat> so, uh, Director Johnson will be presenting you with an overall presentation on how she sees phase three of the re-envisioning rolling out this year. 
that will be separate and in addition to her budget presentation today. I think it'll be helpful to you hear her sense of where yes, we're going. Is. And um, as you've already seen from some events that we've had so far since her arrival, she has big ideas and has delivered on several. It's very exciting to see the things that she's bringing to our community and the community is certainly responding. So there are some significant asks in here. Um, and so she's going to walk you through what the reasons are for that and why she thinks it can be successful and see if we can get you involved in some of those. So uh, the community services presentation will be a bit longer than the fire presentation, although we will still try to keep it brief, of course. And um, we'll get your final direction today. And then our expectation is it will be back in front of you on March, I'm uh, sorry, May 27th for final budget adoption. So thank you so much. And I'm happy to turn it over to Finance Director Chung. Thank you, City Man uh, Manager. And uh, thank you. Good morning, Council Members. Uh, this morning, as the Mayor mentioned, we'll be covering fires, budget, and also community services department budget. The community services department budget will have two pieces to it. They'll begin with their uh, phase three of their re-envisioning as a city manager has mentioned. And then we'll go into more of the budget and how, um, how we're proposing that budget for next year. Um, with that said, um, any direction that the council or any budget changes um, that's discussed today, I will take notes and make sure that that's reflected uh, when I come back to the council on May 27th for any budget changes. And of course, I'll make sure um, any changes that are proposed today uh, for the May 27th meeting, I will make sure I note that and so that it's clear and transparent so that the council understands what changes I've made in the budget. Um, with that said, I'll turn it over to Chief Rueda for the fire department's budget. Good morning, council. Um, other than a correction to the agreement that we have with South Pasadena for command officers and inflation, uh, there's really no significant changes to our to our operating budget for next fiscal year. And I'm available for any questions that you may have. Thank you. Councilwoman Shepard, any questions? I, um, no, thank you, Chief, very much. I had um, comments on the accomplishments. I think you are too modest, and your team, um, I know that you have done strike force and other things that aren't mentioned here that I think are critical to give people um, recognition for their uh, extra work. And so I just was hoping um, that you could add to your the statement and that's in the beginning you know, of the summary of accomplishments this last year. And then I also wanted to, I have a question about, uh, my question is in general, I see that part of the change or increase if, there, if you will, is about the shared command situation, and, and you um, attached um, more document or the other document so we could read it. Um, and I am wondering, is it your opinion that this is still the best arrangement that we could have, or in for that particular position that we share with South Pass? Or if you had any thoughts on that or recommendations going forward, um, because it's I think it's a year to year agreement. I'm not sure. I did not check the term. It is. Uh, I actually do think it's still a uh, a good agreement for our city and for the city of South Pasadena. I did bring a report to council. Uh, I think it was fall of last year. Right. Sort of did an analysis of of the uh, agreement, and the savings, and the advantages and disadvantages. But I I do think it's still a good agreement for us. Uh, we get along uh, very well, which is a big part of it. And we do have good officers in place that ensure the really the safety of our firefighters. So I, I do think it's a good agreement. Okay, thank you. I just want to confirm that that was still your group has budgeting for it. I know we talked about it before. And you gave a hard look at it. So thank you. That, those are my questions or comments. <laughs> question thank you. Uh, Council Member Huang? No, I have no question. Thank, thank you. Thank you. Council Member Yudi? No, I have I have no questions, and I uh, appreciate Council Member Shepard Romney's comment about your accomplishments. They're very modest. I appreciate your leadership, and also I too recognize this as a status quo budget, and uh, you know, think think it's spot on. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Tom. I'm joining all the actors. Thank you. Thank you. Um, I do also with one small question. Um, I think we found that there was a little blip with South Pass um, forgetting to include one expense. With 
that did they do a thorough review to make sure that there wasn't anything else that may have bypassed them? Uh, actually, the audit, we conduct an audit each year. Actually, Jennifer McGee conducts an audit each year. Uh, we had shared with them two years in a row uh, our audit results, and South Pasadena was going through difficulties like many cities of retaining people at the beginning of the pandemic. And uh, it took them a little while to catch up, but they ultimately uh, came to agreement with our audit numbers. And uh, that's the uh, numbers you see are, are the appropriate uh, charge back to our city. So it was based on our finding. Correct. Thank you very much. I'm sorry, go ahead. Um, when are we anticipating the delivery of new uh, RA-91? That is a tough um, uh, question because Sorry. it's out of our control. <laughs> yeah, no, first no. Uh, first uh, difficulty we encountered was COVID and the, the uh, ambulance uh, manufacturer that's building our uh, ambulance uh, didn't have parts, didn't get materials, and didn't have labor. Uh, ultimately, they did complete that construction and uh, that ambulance sits on a Dodge frame um, so Dodge uh, at the ninth hour uh, had a recall of, of lug nuts that they deemed were unsafe. They haven't, uh, they haven't developed a solution for that uh, lug nut issue yet. Um, so we're sort of uh, beholden to Dodge at this point. But uh, we have developed a timeline. I haven't brought it to the city attorney yet because it's not time yet. We haven't paid them anything but it is going on uh, quite a while. We're anxious to get that ambulance. Oh, thank you, Mr. Pugh. And any updates that you would provide as that would be your news, we would appreciate it because the community is also excited to see it. And I know it's important for everybody um, at the station as well. So thank you. Thank you, any questions for council? Seeing none, uh, do you have everything you need from us on this item? Yes, thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Chief. <laughs> Thank you. A lot of yeses. Okay, may we please have the community services presentation? Yes, um, I'll turn it over to Director Johnson in a short while. Uh, we broke this section into two components. She'll, uh, the director will go into more of the phase three re envisioning, um, and she'll have about eight or nine slides. She will take a break. We'll take a break as in question and answer or question opportunity for council regards to the phase three process, and then we'll jump into the actual numbers for the budget that's proposed uh, before you. And I'll turn it over to Director Johnson. Great. Good morning, everyone, honorable mayor and members of the city council. Thanks for the opportunity to provide you with two presentations as Director Chung stated. I characterize them, one as being more narrative in nature, and the other being the numbers. So we'll get to the numbers as quickly as we can. Uh, and we have four slides there and a few more on the narrative side. But first you'll receive an update on the 2023 three-year re-envisioning recreation program plan, which as you know, was um, part of the 2020 uh, re-envisioning process. Secondly, you'll receive the budget for the upcoming fiscal year and uh, the, uh, the budget presentation actually supports the execution of the year three plan that was laid out uh, a couple of years ago. So first off, I'd like to thank city manager Marlowe and my colleagues and teammates. I would be remiss uh, to not thank them. Uh, Finance Director Chung, Recreation Managers Cobra Rubius and Vera, and my uh, uh, invaluable management analyst, Kristen Shiganaga, and for their, for their hours of teamwork and collaboration and support. It's been um, a big learning curve for three of us who are new to the team. Lastly, I'd like to thank you all for your patience and understanding as I represent the CSD team to the best of my ability for the very first time. So the background here, as you know, in 2020, um, the, the council and the department did the re-envisioning. Uh, the approved plan provided a three-year phased roadmap 
for priorities, programs, and services, uh, um, services as well as important initiatives that were community driven through the uh, recreation survey that was done by Green Play, as well as um, some uh, the Blue Ribbon Steering Committee, they weighed in as well. We all know that year one and year two were disrupted and impacted by the pandemic. Year three is what we're looking forward to, and um, it does bring CSD a little bit closer to pre-pandemic service levels, but we will not be fully restored in year three. And I make that comment because on the recreation services side, we did lose several part-time staff and we are not proposing to bring back those, those staff levels, uh, but, we, but we are holding on our service levels, if not in making improvements with existing staff resources. And finally, year three did call for um, back in the 2020 plan that there was a lot of facility utilization discussion back then, but it was also disrupted because as we know, there was a delay in um, the renovation of this facility, as well as the fact that recreation headquarters still resides at Stoneman. So I just wanna make a note for anybody who was part of that process or recalls that process, there was a lot of discussion about programming being adjusted because our facilities uh, spaces were going to be different. Uh, so the 2020 plan, as you will recall, provided a clear direction, as uh, uh, City Manager Marlowe noted earlier this morning, to move programming focus for, away from a high individual benefit to more community building uh, events and opportunities. Doing that would mean uh, the recommendation of fewer contract classes and increase events and community gatherings such as pop-up activities and, and more year-round activities, more balanced year-round uh, programming. Again, the pandemic disrupted that. The 2020 request, uh, a 2020 request came in that also needs to be considered was from community partners, the chamber, as well as uh, the Rotary Club of San Marino that they wanted us to assist in bringing back the uh, community-wide holiday event that was Holiday on the Drive. We heard that in the fall. Uh, and so the plan going forward is uh, 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 that you will hear today is that we are presenting to take a lead on, on an event that really honors and includes that, that tradition. Um, so we're excited to share that that is a change uh, for year three, it wasn't identified in the plan. Obviously, we're in a different time timeline now, and, and it's a new environment. We've lived and survived through the pandemic, uh, and now we're looking ahead into year three with some minor, minor modifications to that roadmap. Which brings me straight, straight to really the emphasis of that plan from my study was uh, the, the community wanted more community building events. So the year three plan, one of the significant proposals has to do with um, a, uh, a new seasonal holiday activities during the timeframe of December through January. The focus would certainly be uh, a multicultural community partnership involvement. Uh, through the staff report, you're familiar with um, uh, some of the concept, the concept to this programming, which would include a theme dubbed right now as holiday on the drive, or excuse me, home for the holidays, excuse me. And that will launch with the refurbishing of the holiday house and bus stop, which you saw in the CIP request. Uh, we are also including to bring back uh, uh, some um, decorations and professional lighting for the adjacent tree as well as City Hall and the library, and then include a themed uh, street banners for uh, Huntington Drive, as well as Mission. This is again, a conceptual plan you had heard through um, the um, communication yesterday that we were presenting a, we are presenting more of a conceptual event. Um, but uh, we are going to talk a little bit more about an alternative to provide counsel later with uh, a more 
fully developed plan. But for right now, and what the budget presentation includes, it does have these three activity components launching with the Home for the Holidays in early December. We would like to uh, propose a, a showcase event, which is a three day winter light festival at Lacey Park, uh, keeping it extremely high level and conceptual again. It would be a ticketed event. Uh, the uh, revenue would cover all of the expenses and uh, an event of this scope would be uh, approximately 315,000. We do have a, a budget for that. We didn't just you know, uh, come, come up with this number. We do have a draft budget that we have shared with uh, Director Chung. And then there is a, a revenue break even offset it would include a mayor's dinner and a preview event, which we thought would be a nice touch. Uh, and then the final piece of this uh, kind of eight to 10 week concept, which also fills a um, programming gap because we really didn't have anything going on during the months of, of um, November, December, and January as it related to community building and community gathering events. However, today, given the feedback that we received midweek, we are going to offer you two different options, uh, which leads me to the next slide. As you consider this event, uh, the, the, the budget did include um, the, the estimated cost of the 315,000 to produce this event, but this week through valuable feedback received from uh, our council liaisons, we were bringing to you these two options. So council can receive the conceptual event proposal as a tentative budget allocation as presented. However, you would direct staff to return at a special meeting in June with that date to be determined with the better developed business plan for final consideration and potential budget approval. That would be first the first option as, we, as you consider this new event proposal. The second option, as you see and you've read through the, the report that was shared with you yesterday, we're offering you uh, a, a more phased approach and a more cautious approach. Uh, I've broken it down to uh, phase one, phase two, which considers scaling back our original concept, conceptual plan event to include just the holiday uh, house bus stop rebuild, uh, which the CIP has already been given, uh, you know, a, a favorable approval on that. We would include the rededication, the rebranding of the, the uh, former event holiday on the drive, including many of those uh, activities that the community loved. Uh, and we would certainly work with um, our community partners, but we would need to include a moderate lighting and, and decorations budget not to include 40,000. So that would be kind of a phased approach and the, and the first step to that with the second phase being directing staff to please take the time over the next nine months to develop a more comprehensive business plan for the winter light festival event, which is, is really the big budget impact that you'll see in the operating budget with the assistance and recommendation of the newly convened Recreation Commission. Staff would then submit a new proposal to council as part of next year's department budget submission. So those are, are, are um, a couple of different ways to consider that new event proposal, which is a significant um, improvement, I believe, uh, improvement as well as a, a budget impact, which we'll hear, you'll hear a little bit more uh, in my final slides when we get to the numbers. Um, the other three year priorities that we um, believed were very important to enforce to council that those are not off our radar. They were part of the three year directive that was presented to you back in 2020 and that uh, we have uh, continued to include in our budget for year three. Uh, certainly, uh, we continue with um, dynamic wellness initiatives 
as you know, uh, we do have our in-house aquatics program management, which was decided last month. We have contract classes continue to be reduced and, and we are we have flatlined those to about uh, anywhere between 50 and 70%, they've already been reduced, okay? And uh, Mayor, uh, you had asked for an analysis on that a couple of days ago, so we do have that for you, um, yeah. And it, we, we, we did that analysis yesterday. Um, a preschool program reduction has begun and we will look at a phased approach to that as our facilities change uh, over the next 18 months should the San Marino Center project go forward and we actually do move um, the rec headquarters as uh, in, in, in addition to the fact that uh, city manager Marlowe mentioned that there's new interest from San Marino Unified School District to discuss the, um, the, the possible taking over of the preschool program. So we are we're in the process of setting up that meeting. So uh, that is still in our radar and still part of the next year's plan. We will definitely get to a uh, the data analysis and a complete evaluation of our user fees and consider uh, fee increases. That's uh, part of our priorities going forward. We will continue to look at uh, pandemic recovery service levels uh, on both sides of recreation and library. Uh, and then um, we are proposing to develop a new strategic operating plan with the partnership uh, as, uh, of, uh, with the Library Board of Trustees, the new Recreation Commission, and then any stakeholders and partners that uh, we need their valuable feedback to set a road back for this department for a new three-year uh, uh, priority plan and strategic plan. Uh, the next um, budget impacted item that um, I'd like to share in this slide represents is that the 2020 plan did call for further unification and branding of the two divisions, recreation and library under a community services department umbrella that we would execute that by uh, making sure we have a comprehensive marketing plan. The core marketing pieces that we use are our community services guide, as well as our website. Uh, we need to also preserve the longstanding legacy and brand of the Coral Public Library. That is a resounding message we heard from our library board of trustees. Uh, and um, I'd like to definitely honor that. Um, uh, we do have copies. My wonderful management analyst has a some hands-on um, copies of Fresh Off the Press yesterday, our new summer guide. And we also have a comparable to the old guide and the improvements that we have made to make, make it a, a, certainly a more effective piece. Um, I can assure you that this is the professional industry standard uh, across all community services and um, departments across the country, the state, and the region. Um, uh, while the numbers reflect a um, sizable increase, at, you know, as it might be uh, perceived, I think it's important to note that while the current budget does reflect on the books, uh, currently an, an ability to produce this document and this core publication, it was around 12,500. It, it was uh, terribly underestimated. It was actually uh, myself and Kristen through our analysis, we um, realized that the prior budget did not capture the actual true direct cost to produce this piece. That's one reason why it was underestimated. And um, it was also um, estimated that that 12-4, the staff at the time making the budget decisions, they uh, thought that possibly they could collapse one of the issues into a combined issue, that's a real tough task. So taking it down to four publications per year from four to three, uh, that is part of, uh, part of well, partly why that number is so low. Uh, and then the other reason why it's low is the hope was that we could continue to produce the guide with in-house talent to do graphic design. And it was simply realized throughout last year that we do not have the skill set on our existing team. So we needed to move this to utilization of 
professional graphic design services. So uh, along with those reasons for the increase, along with uh, the uh, ability or the need to contract graphic design, we also have inflationary impacts on paper and printing, much like several other uh, sectors across the across goods and services. Uh, uh, you know, we too are realizing uh, the cost impact to produce this guide. So um, that is uh, part of a, a proposal that we have for the community services guide to represent our department uh, in a unified front and and really do our community proud as we uh, present our core marketing piece uh, that the uh, residents and uh, really deserve uh, and as well as our services and the, the funding that you provide us to, to uh, offer these services, they deserve to be showcased in a very professional manner. The next slide represents uh, our personnel and part-time uh, FTE impact. Uh, the full-time equivalent being proposed here and the increase really is attributed to um, uh, the already approved uh, aquatic section that we uh, uh, bring that back in house. As you can see, the fiscal impact is about 115,000 with 2.2 FTE. And then the other minor impact has to do with the fact that in discussing um, some uh, 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 with a, the former uh, public works director, Michael Throne and I discussed that um, for operational efficiency, as well as customer service at Lacey Park, uh, as well as the fact that community services is um, very skilled at managing part-time staff, as well as managing revenue, we thought it would be uh, uh, prudent for us to consider uh, uh, moving the park attendance at Lacey Park over under community services. Uh, this gives a better continuity, continuity of care uh, to um, uh, servicing our, our park attendants, not only our rentals and our rental customers, as well as um, all of the activities and events that at the park community services is really responsible for. So Michael and I sort of discuss it in terms of Public Works and Parks Division oversees the physical property, uh, the maintenance, the grounds, but community services, we oversee the activation of the spaces, all of the customer service interactions, as well as the oversight and safety with the day-to-day, -day, if you will, uh, of park operations. So Michael liked the idea. I was, I, I, I certainly believe that is a, is a common practice. So we are going to be receiving, should council approve this shift in uh, personnel movement, that we will be overseeing the front gatehouse uh, as well as the staff that come along with it. And finally, we are uh, proposing a title change for the um, city librarian position to more of an industry standard, uh, as well as the way we are organized by division, changing the title of city librarian to the uh, library manager. Uh, working title. And that uh, certainly gives more consistency and reduces confusion when we refer to that position. Next, and I believe it's my last slide, and we'll get to a question and answer, uh, it has to do with staff development. That is another impact or a notable increase in our budget submission. We would like council to please um, yeah, uh, consider enhancing the investment in the city's most valuable assets, its people and our staff. Uh, we ask that you support uh, a greater retention and recruitment uh, with uh, and staff uh, by enhancing staff development and training program for our department. We'll stay competitive with our peer cities. And from what I understand, although I wasn't here, city manager Marlowe did point out that back um, a few years back, uh, I don't know if it was pre-pandemic, I think it might have been, because I doubt that we were uh, um, uh, adding any uh, uh, staff training and development during the pandemic years when, um, you know, we were uh, in, a, in a lockdown. But other departments back in 18, 19, 19, 20 did receive um, in, uh, additional dollars for staff development, but uh, recreation and community services did not. 
So um, uh, you can you can see there. I, I won't read verbatim the um, you know the numbers, but we are asking for um, an increase and, and a support for professional de development for all eleven full time professional positions, as well as uh, customer service training. We do have a large department by headcount. Uh, and uh, as you can see, there are the numbers, and we are also including a some minor increase and a, uh, a training allocation for customer service training. With that being said, that completes my presentation, and I am here along with uh, Finance Director Chung and my colleagues. I will do the best uh, I can to answer all of your questions. So I'm sure we have several. Thank you. I'm fully aware of the amount of time put into this this week um, by both of you and your staff, and it's very much appreciated. Uh, we are coming back from a pandemic, so we really appreciate the effort. Um, if it's acceptable to all, in speaking with City Manager Marlowe, she made a great request, I believe, that we break it down into the three areas that you have presented here, the holiday event, the services guide, and staff development, and the budget will be continued there. Um, so uh, I'm going to start with your presentation on the holiday, holiday event and the options that you provide. At this point, I'm looking for questions from council um, may we please start with Councilwoman Shepard Bowman? Uh, what are we talking about? Um, the, the, the holiday event, any questions you might have on what's being presented to us in terms of options? Is that the slide? Maybe that would be helpful. Yeah, I found it here as well. So um, if people want to follow along, I think it's. Um, I guess coming out of the blue, um, this um, focus on adding substantially to what was previously, I'm going to say, holiday around the drive, um, which is it, I think people in the community would like to see brought back, obviously. And um, with the CIP work, uh, the phase to include the holiday house. Um, I think that it will be exciting this year to do that. My concern, I guess, and question for you is, when I hear that um, we previously discussed that we wanted community-wide events or community building events, and that to me means um, participation of a lot of people and spread throughout the year. But this to me is a lot of money and time of staff who do an outstanding job um, devoted to essentially a three day or light up. I don't know how you describe it. Um, like has been going on for pre pandemic for several years at Descanso and the Arboretum. So we have neighboring cities that have or locations that have very well established, highly regarded sold out multi-month, I think they go in or they start lighting up in November, maybe sometime right after um, uh, Halloween and they go through, even now, I think they've extended those through two years. We have excellent options for community that aren't community building, but they're incredible, beautiful light up events at those two, um, one's a public county facility and obviously the is a nonprofit. And this, in my mind, is a lot of effort and expense to have a similar program here, I guess. And so I'm wondering, was there discussion about this being something, I don't know where the, I guess, impetus came from. And is there a way to dial it back in the sense of, and then do more events in the summer, let's say, because I'm not seeing other than 4th of July, which we're bringing back. Um, and we've had as much as we always have, but hopefully there's fun things planned and it's, I know it's a lot of work. Um, are there other well, things? Well, you have the guide, have? the summer guide do you have in front of right. you. So that's yeah. what I was concert around. series. Yeah, the concert series. Right, it's, concert it's coming series. back. So oh, yeah. I'm thrilled. Yeah. And yeah. I, I just love that. And I think mm -hmm. that's a perfect example. 
example of what, what we kind of had before, but also make it better. You guys mm -hmm. are thoughtful and we'll do that. So I'm just trying to figure out what else or, or why the emphasis on this and of what what's the reason. Mm -hmm. It does require a significant amount of time and cost, mm -hmm. either your option one or your option two. Mm -hmm. Okay, yeah, thank you. That's a great question. And I will go back to, um, uh, in, in talking with the event team and the recreation staff, and um, uh, as we look at our event calendar year round, I mentioned that we had a, um, a service gap. As I was getting to know our events throughout the year, and we, and we calendared them, and I, I worked with Victoria and Angie and Eddie and the team, and I said, well, what are we doing during November, December, and January? And um, I'm seeing that we didn't have anything. And so it's talking about and brainstorming about what would be, you know, something that we could do that was different, you know, and really uh, showcase our, 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 our beautiful venue that we have, which is Lacey Park, uh, and what types of holiday events are out there that might be unique and interesting. Um, then kind of simultaneously as we were brainstorming for uh, a new events at, at during kind of a planning charrette with the team, was right when uh, the um, holiday house uh, uh, feedback we were receiving from community partners kind of happening at the same time. September, October, November, I think was when, maybe October, November, we were preparing for that. So um, the team and I said, you know, yes, there, uh, you know, what, what are the variety of things we could be doing in December? And we immediately thought of, of, of uh, you know, holiday lights. We do do light up. We did. We were able to execute the new event last year, light up San Marino, the holiday house decorating, very successful with keeping that. Uh, but we thought, what could we do at Lacey Park? And um, so a light festival came up, very common that uh, recreation departments um, that have beautiful venues and uh, parts of the country that, um, you know, even are really cold. They, they, we do these types of events, but how can we make ours unique and special to San Marino? So, um, and yes, we did analyze um, the market all throughout Southern California. We are aware of the two events. I, I, I sent in uh, our, our research to um, a couple of the council members yesterday. So we did get this question from council uh, member Edie yesterday. Um, so we, were, we are aware that the closest within our service region is four miles away. So it's not San Marino proper, but we believe we will draw from our neighboring cities. And, and if we look at the population of just our neighboring cities, you're looking at about a 300,000 service population just within five or six mile radius that we can pull from, even you know, going out to seven or eight miles. So our direct competition will be, would be Wisconsin Gardens and the Arboretum event. But we wanted to give something to our residents and showcase San Marino uh, or, or showcase it and showcase our community. We know that we do get a lot of people, non-residents coming to our events. We have the reputation of being able to, you know, I wasn't here. Uh, you know, and, and to the credit of our uh, recreation team and our event team, as well as our public works and our public safety, everybody being able to work together to produce safe, beautiful, reputable events. And so uh, in back to our planning charrette, we said, why not? Let's do a beautiful showcase event that, you know, yes, it would be ticketed. You can't do an event that requires large displays okay, and we've got to be able to pay for it. We would never come to council and say, please support an event like this and let's provide it for free, you know? But we, want, we, we wanted to dream big. We want a beautiful event like this. We believe we do have the skills and the competency and the capabilities to ultimately produce an event like this. Uh, maybe, uh, maybe we do have a lot of confidence in our collective abilities to deliver an event like this. Uh, I fully understand uh, maybe the cautious, more conservative nature, uh, and, and, I, and I completely understand that. Um, being able to establish an event like this that is ticketed, to be able to say that, uh, you know, we can generate the revenue to cover the expense, um, you know, we won't know until we try. 
but we also know we are very good at marketing. We, we I, have, I have a huge background and an ability to not only do a local marketing and aggressive promotional campaign, but also develop the partners that we are going to need uh, to produce this event. That's where the, um, the, the astute feedback that we got from uh, um, Mayor Jacobowski and Udi came this week. Uh, maybe, maybe we should, for um, taking this big leap of faith, have a better developed business plan before we actually go, you know. And, and, and thank you for responding to the question. We will definitely have more discussion to bring to you on this item. Okay. Do you have another question on the table? On, on the, uh, uh, we're just talking about the one. Yes. Okay. Only that item, the holiday event. Okay. Um, I don't know. Well, if you do, we'll do another round. Thank you. Uh, Council Member Udi, any questions on the holiday event? Yes. Uh, Director, have you done an event like this before? I have done uh, multiple day events, absolutely. Uh, not a winter event, or not a winter light festival event, no, but I have done a ticketed multi day events. Absolutely, I have. Okay, so and uh, have you reached support. have you reached out to our community partners, such as the, you know, school district, Rotary, Chinese Club, City Club, to to see if they would support this and how they might be included? Um, no, we have not directly. Uh, that would certainly have been a priority should the event get approved. We believe that we do have enough um, relationship and feedback from okay. all these partners that and, and past practice that has your has your team thought about how you might coordinate this with uh, the historical St. Albans lighting up? I'm sorry, could you repeat that? Good. Has your team thought about how to coordinate this type of event with the St. Albans tree lightings? I, I think that's a great idea. And I don't know that we got that far down the road. Again, okay. this was conceptual, but that is a wonderful idea. And we would love to pull that in. Uh, and I mean, our, our community is only four square miles. We should absolutely be coordinating and, and highlighting yeah. all of our holiday events and, and marketing and promoting it. And, and in the 315,000 for this project, where did that number come from? Uh, we, we do have a draft budget, uh, council member. Um, okay. Uh, it's been and, vetted through our, our uh, finance director, and we spent a lot of time. We didn't just pull this number, you know, out of thin air. It is uh, a, a um, collection of contract services, equipment rentals. We've got a little bit of liability insurance, materials, okay. supplies. We have a we have a complete draft. Okay, and and then at about a. You know, you said the ticket price would be thirty to forty bucks, so I just averaged thirty-five. So that would be about nine to ten thousand, you know, guests to come through the, the turnstile to make this a break-even. Do you think that that, yeah? Do you think that's uh, realistic? We'd like to think so, given the fact that we uh, our our other large community events, such as Fourth of July, the egg hunt, as well as the holiday of or the Halloween. Event two thousand, and then uh, I we historically uh, can can draw anywhere from seven thousand to over ten thousand on a good year for Fourth uh, of July. Okay. So we'd like to think that um, you know we we could move uh, and and attract uh, nine to ten thousand people over a three day period. Okay, uh, thank you. I have no other questions. Thank you, Councilmember Huang. Questions okay. on the holiday event? Yeah, I guess so. On, um, regarding the option one, option two, um, which one do you prefer? Which one do you I did prefer? expect you to ask me that. Um, we're asking you guys that question. Which one do I prefer? Yeah. Um, well, I'm not gosh. a one that's going to do it, so. G give me, yeah. give me. Uh, okay, give me a second. Cue music. Cue music for some <laughs> thinking time. Um, I 
I, I, I guess the, the clear, if I, if I were to be really, really succinct, I, I, maybe I'm leaning, I'm maybe leaning 60-40 uh, option two, uh, just because I think to give every, uh, do I think we could, do I think we could make a, a really good, excellent run at, at this event this year? Absolutely. I have complete confidence in myself and my team. But given the feedback, uh, and, and all of the, the, uh, the good, astute, you know, uh, constructive criticism, I think it would be prudent to go with option two and, um, and, and, and pump the brake a little bit and, cut and, and really develop a uh, better business plan. Thank you. Thank you, Fred. No. Council member, or, I'm sorry. Council and I'm sorry Council? for the long-winded answer. Um, Also, thank you for the detailed time that you offered to meet with me with many advanced questions I had. Um, and I think I will land in a similar place to Vice Mayor with option two, um, only because um, I think option one has a future, but building a reputation, building um, on what does work, um, the egg hunt, as we know, has been around a long time. Fourth of July has been an institution. Um, so we would indeed um, be having some competition against other communities, but I think that's an obstacle that could be overcome. Additionally, um, I'd like to take a closer look at um, continuing to provide something that would be no cost during the holidays. Um, we've been away from that for a while and even residents could end up spending say 120, 30 bucks to bring their family into life. So at this point, um, I think we've got some exciting options to um, build on. So um, I think that that is feeling better, but I wanted to ask you one or two more questions. You mentioned um, house decorating. Is there anything else that's continuing um, this year during the holidays besides? We did some things with COVID and is there anything else? For example, I think you had some inflatables around town. Um, well, I, I know that um, our department, Community Services, we did light up San Marino. Um, and then uh, I know that um, the economic or community development might've done the um, shopping, I'm sorry, shop local bingo. That wasn't from our department, but you know the city we did we did sponsor that uh, holiday activity. I know, and and all of these things, uh, Marcella has asked me to kind of spearhead a, a better uh, coordination and promotion of these internal kind of initiatives that various city departments uh, have done in the past to bring it really uh, under the the. Um, uh, promotional effort of, of our department as well as uh, coordination. That would also include the fire department. The fire department does uh, a holiday, um, and I'm sorry, it's a, I'm sorry, Chief, I don't wanna speak on behalf, and I, and I was new here kind of at the time, but, but really making sure that we showcase all of those initiatives coming out of city departments. Sorry. Yeah, is that, does that answer your question? Um, yes, and In then terms I have- inflatables, I'm sorry. I don't want to not answer your question. Did we do anything inflatables wise? Okay, so the year before during COVID, we didn't do inflatables. We, we did do the program where we uh, delivered poinsettias to some of our senior residents one year. So that was one activity that we did. Inflatables were for the Halloween event, the drive through Halloween event. Thank you very much. Well, Thank you. And um, we usually budget each year for the trolley. Um, have you contacted whoever is still involved with the Chamber of Commerce to hear what, if any, holiday plans they have? And if not, what you're- No, we absolutely to. plan to do that. So they have already committed? I, I don't, we are mid-year, it just happened. So, and I don't really know, but that is, is absolutely, we, we are budgeting for that, correct, Paul? Yes. We are budgeting for that and we do plan to 
And no, we have not contacted them yet. Okay. It's a little early. We're, we're kind of focusing on, on the other events that we have in front of us, but it is absolutely on our plan to reach out and make sure we're well coordinated there as well. Okay, so just at budget time, though, the trolley is yes. traditionally yes. included in our July 1 budget, correct? It, it is included in the current budget. Okay, so just mm -hmm. to make sure yep. that we have that option. Yep. We did discuss um, this a couple weeks ago, Paul and I did. Okay, um, I will go back to Councilwoman Shepard Romy. You thought you may have some more questions? Uh, no. Okay, so um, would it be uh, helpful at this point if we gave you our vote on what our option is so that you could uh, take that into account moving forward? Comments first? Sure. Okay. I think you just did a round of questions on the Homes for the Holidays. I think Council Member Shepard Brown is thinking now you might have comments on the Homes for the Holidays, okay. and then you can give us your straw poll. Right. Okay. Right. Thank you. Um, I, um, well, I am concerned about this and uh, don't have some problem about spending such a significant amount of money for an event that we also are going to charge a significant amount of money for residents and non-residents to come to. Um, it seems like it's more of a commercial venture than it is a community building. Um, events if we're charging 30, I guess, um, as Council Member Yudi pointed out, like uh, approximately $35 a person. And I understand um, we don't want to be out as a city so much money, but I also think that discriminates as maybe too strong of a word, but um, might lead to fewer community members bringing their families or being engaged with this event that's going to take obviously a lot of resources and time um whether it's this year or next year i mean a nine-month planning process to do it i understand it might be but i just think that's um too much of our staff time and effort for a three-night um very expensive event that competes with two well-known events nearby and i understand you could probably achieve all of that i just want to think of our staff resources and our financial resources and spend it on more community events, whether it's Coco in the park and a movie, a cute Christmas movie. I don't know, there's a million things that we could do. I also was concerned because it would be a night event, both the impact on the surrounding community, you know, when we have, um, at that time of year in particular, people have their families home for the holidays and parking is a premium, even around town. Uh, our police department often waives street parking because we have many family members who come from other places to enjoy the holidays here with us. And the fun things like um, the fire department going around on Christmas morning. So my concern is, well, this isn't December 25th, I understand, but the one-time event, for example, the egg hunt, great egg hunt, and the um, trunk or treat, which were hugely successful, were fairly finite during time frame. One was at night, I understand, um, but they were finite, you know, three to four hours, it was watch a movie, do the trick or treating or the egg hunt. And I don't think, it, and it's a one time affair. So I don't think it caused that much stress if people knew that lived near there. Uh, the parking was a huge issue on both of those. And I received complaints. I don't know if other council members do. And I understand people that live near the park are going to be impacted by events. And we have obviously the car classic that's remote for many days. We have Fourth of July, so we have so many things that impact that park. While I want to use it, I hate to have those all be a car base. People drive in and park for miles around, and nobody that lives there um, can get out of their driveway or have a guest over for their own. So I have a big concern about that, and also I don't know that we're factoring in the security at night um, for a three-day night event. And I'm just thinking that's a big issue for our police. We have to think about overtime hours, which is a um, a difficult thing already right now, um, and or employing him a bit others. Um, so I just think, in my mind, this is not something that I even option one or option two. I think we had to go back to the drawing board and think of a low key event that's a one night, you know, and doesn't involve so much investment of time and resources, and it could be a minimal charge of five dollars or whatever you need for RSVPs but we're also not asking people to spend a lot of money on the holidays um, for something like this. So in a big picture sense, I just 
think I don't have an option one or two. I actually have an option three, which is to not go forward and come back with a or family-based, or even if it's a senior-based, or something, a more modest one-time event um, that would be nice around the holidays. And maybe it's even at New Year's and we just stay away from um, any particular religious affiliation around the holidays, which is also problematic for me. So um, those are my thoughts on it. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Yudi, your discussion. Oh, I'm sorry, Council Member Yudi. There we go. Um, no, I, I, I'm intrigued by the concept, but I don't have confidence in the plan yet. Um, I also think trying to execute this grant of a thing within the next six months would be uh, very, very difficult. Um, I think having strong support by our community partners, such as Rotary City Club, Sam, uh, Chinese Club would be absolutely critical to the successful implementation of anything like this. So I would have a very hard time committing over $300,000 with what I've seen so far in terms of the plan. Anything further? Nope, thank you. Thank you, Council Member Juan. Well, thank you um, uh, to you and your staff, especially Eddie, I mean, you know, you guys have done uh, wonderful jobs. Uh, and um, I think, I can't remember which event that was, but past year in the summer, was it a trick or treat? Yeah, I mean, you know, that was overwhelming. So I think you guys are on the right track. And um, I do have a question, like three days, which, I mean, which three days in December would, I mean, would you do this? We haven't completely identified that exact date, but it would be a, a Thursday, Friday, Saturday. That's I mean, a very like difficult. Early so December, early early December, early December though, absolutely staying away from closer to the uh, holiday break for schools, as well as when families start traveling and, and we'll button up against the true holidays. So first, first or second week in December, maybe. And, and um, why and why three days? Sorry, uh, it's, it, uh, you know, if, if we're going to uh, embark on this level of, of, of an event, we, you know, we doing it, it it's not really cost effective. Try to do it for one day. Uh, we thought doing a three day would be, um, you know, an ability to give families options to come either days as we compete against a lot of different activities that are going on uh, during that time frame. So if we're going to do it, let's. Let's uh, kind of maximize uh, the opportunity to, tell, to sell tickets. It would be from approximately five to nine o'clock at night. The park would stay open during the day. We would uh, have a security in the park. We have budgeted for that uh, to make sure that we have eyes on the displays at all times. But we, we thought a three day would be, it, it's fairly typical for uh, events like this to be multi-day, if not a week. But we, we, we kept it smaller at three days. Great, okay. Um, well, I'm not sure about 315, you know, uh, but um, I think I can support this because um, after the last two years, you know, of the lockdown and all of that, I think uh, we need an event like this to uplift our spirit. And, you know, you won't know until you try. I mean, I mean, we've failed at a lot of events, so, you know, it doesn't hurt to try. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Anything else? Oh, which option? Of course, I like option one because I want to see it right away. But, um, but, but uh, you know, we can wait. You know, it's up to you. I, you know, whatever you makes you guys uh, comfortable. Thank you. Thank you, Vice Mayor Tom. I uh, once again, and Councilor I, 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 I really agree with the fact that this, this. Uh, Community needs uh, events, and we've seen the overwhelming uh, support of the community on events that you have come up with in the last uh, year. Uh, I would be uh, like Council Member Wong, uh, feel that we, we may need it more this year, but I also understand this amount of treasure going into an event like this. It's probably best thought out. I would have learned lots more if you said option one, but since you're with. <laughs> Since you're 60% on option two, I agree that maybe we should be a little more prudent for an event this size and give an opportunity uh, of a long period of time for the market. Uh, and and uh, answer the questions we've heard today in a budget uh, discussion. Thanks. Thank you. Uh, okay. Yeah, so option one, 
awesome amount of time and effort and creativity put into this. That's what I absolutely love about the folks that you work with in your, your team. Um, I feel that option one is um, probably too ambitious for this year. And um, what I would like to do is just get the community back on the road again. Uh, we have not had holiday around the drive and I think people really miss that. And if we could have um, the kickoff to that being the holiday house, as we know from those people who put that up and take it down, it's really meaningful to them. We could have a, uh, an unveiling, um, a ceremony honoring those and their organizations who have been involved with that each year and have that be a kickoff to the evening of the holiday around the drive. I would like very much for us to check back with the Chamber of Commerce because they are normally the sponsor of that. If they are not in a position to do so, I would be fully supportive of us doing that internally, but I think we owe them that. Yeah, that's first. part of the plan, absolutely. And, um, and of course, the trolley seems to work well with that. Uh, and I think what would be helpful since option number one uh, requires great detail um, even before the budget planning process next year to come and just do an early report to council to get feedback on the details of the conceptual project, including dates, cost, time, who your target audience, how you would sell tickets and so forth. So um, that's where I feel we should be going. We may have a little bit of a twist on our voting here. So I guess I'll start with straight option one, uh, going ahead and doing it this year. Are there any votes for that? Doing option number one and on that page that you have right. Okay, so we have one vote for option one. <laughs> going forward, um, Stephen has volunteered to help on that. Um, with the conceptual uh, event being filled in um, for this year. Um, looking at option two, I am hearing some variations of it. So um, let's go first way that it's written, option two with both phase one and phase two. Would anybody like to vote for it as written? I see one, two votes there. Um, option two with a little bit of change to what phase one and phase two would be. Um, so, Mayor, Mayor, I, I want to say one thing. Uh, you know, I voted for it as it's written, but I, I, I got a, a microscope on that phase two because it's going to have to have a really well thought out plan, I think, for this to be successful from a lot of the barriers that were mentioned about the cost, the three day commitment, uh, weather, security, everything, everything else. Okay. And you tell me, I'm just going to offer a path forward when you're ready. I wanted to hear from Councilwoman Shepard Romy where she is with her vote. I do not support this at all. At all. Okay. So we're really across all the right. board. Can I offer? Please. All right. Well, can I ask you the word the You say that you're for option two, but not portion one. But what, what, what do you mean? Yes. Yeah, sure. Um, I would like to do um, a pretty close version of phase one, um, but phase two, dedicating the next nine months. Um, at this point, I think planning for it, the intent for it to occur is a semi-commitment. I think that I would be more in support of a more detailed conceptual presentation with input before committee. Well, staff would then submit a revised proposal to our next year's fiscal year budget submission. So I am not... But we're I'm working anything by, by saying that we're phase two. What I'm saying is, uh, we all want to see more before you move ahead, but before we agree to it. But I get your, your point, but I think it's already made. Uh, maybe this will help. Maybe this will not. Uh, it sounds like there is clearly no majority to move forward with the event this year. 
So I think that decision has been made. Uh, I don't think we need a motion or a vote to bring a recommendation forward next year. So we've taken the comments here and certainly Director Johnson can listen to what she's heard and see if it's gonna be feasible to recommend something next year. So we probably don't need to vote on that. So it seems to me at this point that I've also heard consensus for at least what we normally do. So I think we're good with holiday around the drive and, and those programs. So it seems to me, and two directors to my left tell me if I'm wrong, it seems to me that the only thing that we need final direction on from you in terms of including into the budget is, would you like to include an additional roughly $40,000 to do a little bit something more? And that's really all we know today. Or would you like to leave that 40,000 out? Which is listed in the phase one. Okay, so let's have a little bit of discussion on that. Um, if we were to do a phase one, uh, that would include then the holiday house um, being part of... Yes, I'm that. hearing consensus on that, and you've already supported the CIP project, so we're good on that one. Okay, so um, I think what we're talking about as a council here is we'd like to allocate some additional money to beef up a holiday around the drive concept this year, and uh, any thoughts on that? Councilwoman Shepard Romy, how do you feel about that? Um, I, I think the addition of um, additional lighting and decoration um, for along the drive, as well as perhaps at the entrance of Lacey Park or somewhere where people can see it and drive by, would be lovely. And um, so I think we have very um, creative people, manager, our rec manager, <coughs> associates may come up with some other fun inflatables around in public areas that, you know, could be used at night or something. I think about bringing that as well back into it. People enjoy taking pictures and doing that, so there might be something along those lines that would be charming to add to our family. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Udy, how do you feel about some additional monies? I, I trust the creativity of the team, and 40000 seems reasonable to me. Thank you. Thank you. Council Member Huang? Uh, yes, I can support this um that uh, starting with forty thousand is a great idea and maybe you can have some um, lightings on the medians of in drive so when people drive by you can feel the holidays and, you know so we can be happy thank you that's awesome yeah. thank you vice mayor Tom. um i don't agree with the council one but i do agree with the council <laughs> <laughs> afraid of agree <laughs> 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 um yes i think it's wonderful and I think you need it now more than that. And that little extra touch will be just great with the 40,000 to make it look festive and beautiful. Thank you. Do you have oh, all right. You so let me just that. be sure I have this right. Uh, what I'm hearing is we will not be doing the home uh, for the holidays event this year. We may go back and work on a proposal for next year. We will do our normal events in uh, the holiday time, plus an additional roughly $40,000 that we'll include in the budget for additional lighting and that sort of thing. I also believe that there was support for putting in the next year's budget moving forward with the plan. Uh, the only person that was outright against you only had one vote against that all the other. So that, that's fine. I was just thinking that we don't need an official vote on that. Oh, I think no. she's excited yeah. about the project anyway. So I would expect right. that. But right. we can we can take that uh, as official direction um, from a, a four one structure. Okay. Thank you. Great. Thank you. So you've got everything we've got what we need on that. Uh, <laughs> Okay,
Okay, uh, we are reconvening. Uh, we are in the process of going over community services specific issues. Um, and I would like to move next to the um, services guide. And uh, we see that addressed on page 64 of 110 of our budget. And in a moment, we will ask for um, a little more discussion. I think we've got that also on our handout on one of the, the pages aren't numbered, but if you flip through, you'll see community services guide listed there. And I also understand that we do have a public comment on this issue. And um, Director Johnson, you'll be delighted to hear, not only is it hot off the press, but it's already arrived in some of our homes. So uh, we're happy to say that. So at this point, I'd like to pick up the discussion. You have the numbers, the terms in front of you. Um, based on either page 64 or the handout that we received today. If council members could please um, share, uh, we'll start with any questions that you might have for clarification. Again, this is only on the community services guide. Um, council member Udy. <clears throat> yeah, thank you. And I can appreciate that a community services drive is part of a of a marketing program that's uh, pretty important for this sector. Um, you mentioned you were going to outsource the production of the community services guide. Is there a staff time savings associated with that as compared to how it was done in the past? The, the question is, if I could repeat it, you're asking if there is staff time savings for production, meaning the design aspect? Yes. Yes, there is. Yes, there is. And, and that person who was doing it uh, was a programmer, an actual recreation supervisor. And when she was doing design work or attempting to uh, do professional design work, which you know, was really outside of her comfort zone. She was not programming. So that okay. person is back to programming. Okay. And then would you, you're mentioning four color. Would you do four color throughout or just on the cover? It's full color. Do you know what a cost differential might be if you did a four color cover, but went two color inside for the in, inside? Uh, we didn't we didn't cost it out my experience uh with um that several years ago is it, it will drop the price nominally uh but not significantly i do not have those those numbers in front of me okay thank you no more no more questions thank you council member Huang. um i mean if we don't set out these issues uh, uh, can we save any money? I mean, I, I, mean, I, I mean, you still have to design this and all that. How much money, I mean, if we go just on internet or website, mm -hmm. email, mm -hmm. instead of, you know, because I'm trying to be uh, environmental conscious. Right, friendly going here. paperless, right, not yeah. printing it. Right. The, the- um, How much money can we save? Yep, that's a big question. All communities and the industry have asked themselves for, for many, many years, just going straight digital. Uh, and the feedback from the community through surveys uh, and focus groups is that, and certainly our community, uh, because of our, our older population and a lot of folks, they just like that printed piece. It's like folks who don't wanna not have that newspaper in front of them. Um, but if there's an overwhelming, typically through research and outreach to the community that people like the printed guide. I have not done it here in San Marino, but I have done it in other communities as well as across our industry. We've tried to consider reducing the, the paper utilization and getting away from printing going full digital, and it's just not popular. And Council Member, the answer to your question is we would reduce printing costs and the postage costs, Yes. but even a digital guide still needs to be designed. Right. So, so uh, some so costs would go away, but not all of them. So Kathy, do you know what the design element cost would be? Yes. Separating out the printing and the 
Yeah. Uh, yeah, I know from a design, we, we right now outsourcing, it's approximately 3000 per issue that, that we pay for professional design. We don't have that staff and skill set on, on, our, on our team. Is that correct? I, I believe it's around 3000 No, it's actually 16, it's almost 17,000 to get it professionally designed. That's a budget number. That's a budget number. For per issue? No, collectively annually. For, oh, okay. yeah, so not per issue. Whatever yeah, we annually. Okay, thank you. Sorry. It sounds like about three to four thousand an issue okay. just for the design of it digitally. Okay, yeah, because I imagine I'm seeing 18,000 issues flying around. Oh no, we no, yeah, no, we only print 5,000, 4,500 going to going to each yeah, house. So four issues a year, right? Yeah, oh yes, pardon me, you're adding so, uh, 18,000 per issue versus uh, yeah. Um, that's all I have for now. Thank you. Thank you. Councilwoman Shepherd Romy. Uh, yes, I was I, I guess I have a question. The for example, you gave us the um, summer of 2019 as a comparison of and i appreciate that I, um and it was 47 pages long and create included a lot of community news obviously there's a front section as well as facility rentals you know so people can do that extensive about the fourth of july um announcements services listings various and then it got into classes and calendars etc and finished with some other things so a much larger and also all-encompassing i mean it even talked about you know what gardeners needed to do and town hall meetings that we were going to have. Um, so my question is, I think, and I guess this may perhaps to Paul, but Paul's talking to city manager Marlowe, but uh, we have now budgeted or, or there was one aspect of this was that we're now having a separate budget line item to produce a, a community or city mailer of like 60,000. I'm trying to remember where and, and where that came in. I know we have issues in the, um, community development, building and planning that we want to inform the public about. But is that, which we have built into our budget now, meant to also include some of the things that are here, like our town halls and city highlights, or what's gonna to happen to the first seven, eight, nine pages of this, which are community information. I'm just wondering, both we're getting less or more focused, right, with this, and it's costing a lot more, but also what's happening with the other part that we used to send out. Uh, you're talking about, are you speaking of the the plan twice a year resident mailer that we talked about in our previous budget meeting? I don't know. Yeah. Okay. I, don't know. okay. I know we have a budget line item for, yes, a biannual. Yes. Okay. Okay. Good. I got and it. And I don't know if that's this. No. Or, yeah. Great question. Uh, no. The, what you're talking about is a line item we put on the city manager's budget because it's community engagement. It would be a twice a year mailer to residents. And uh, just to recap, that would be like a reference Bible that would be timeless, if you will, that people could keep and not get rid of as council member Wong has so sadly suggested, um, that would be reference information, not time specific. The, okay. the program guide is time specific. And once the time is over, you know, you can, you can get rid of it. So some of the information in the guide in the first couple of pages in terms of who are your council members, what, when are council meetings in general? That kind of information probably would be in the resident biennial uh, mailer, but upcoming meetings would not be in that mailer. Does that, does that make sense? So this is really a time, how do we get information to the community at a particular point in time to capture their interest for things that are going on right then? The other one is intended to be a more standalone, keep for all time, or until we update an ordinance document that the community can refer to that's not time sensitive. Okay. Uh, yeah, I think so. Um, I'm just wondering, is there some way to capture these, help conserve water? Are you ready for full kind of pickup? You know, all those things that are community that are not going to be in the line item that you're describing, right. but they're no longer covered in this. I'm sorry, in this. I, I will illustrate. The new, so I'm just wondering, we are, are affected giving less information out by moving to something like this, I guess is my point. And is there a thought of how we're going to capture sort of seasonal information that people need to know about, whether it's water restrictions or bulk item, or now we have this new trash thing going on about, you know, how we're supposed to, where is that getting to the community or informing them about timely 
current thing. We have since that, uh, since the old guide, we have moved most of that notification digital. For, uh, so the weekly briefing and on the website and that sort of thing. But I think if there was a desire from council to move that into a hard copy document for all the reasons that Director Johnson has mentioned about our residents that prefer a hard copy, that would go back in here as opposed to in the other document. Okay. So that's expanding essentially this. Correct. Okay. Then that is that's my main area of questions. Thank you. Thank you. Okay. How many pages is the old one? Forty-seven. Oh, we have different. I have a summer of 2019, and it has, well, not including the covers, but 47 pages. Okay. Thank you. Okay. So, um. So, yeah, I, I, I have some of the so, same similar concerns. And the pricing then for 46A gets us 24 pages, right? Yes, it does. Okay. Um, yeah, um, I'm concerned about we're hearing about the purpose of each, you know, this would be seasonal and then the ones that would be sent out twice a year would be informational along the I, I agree. Um, many residents say if it's not my mail, it doesn't exist. So, um, and we're skewed with a fair amount of older residents. Um, so I'm, I'm having some concerns about the page limitation out of curiosity you probably would have had no reason to do this if we were to play around with things like what council member Yudi was talking about did you ever ask about pricing beyond 24 pages no because uh the scope of this is uh, specifically to short sure. community services we certainly can consider and, and absolutely Absolutely collaborate with the city manager's office to, you know, scope out the addition of, of broader community announcements to be included, and then um, and and consider or, or and actually ask for quotes for, you know, adding. I think it's about four pages at a time that you have to add. Okay, thank you. Um, I. I, do, I don't know. Oh, I'm don't sorry. Know. I do not know the answer to that. Right. So, okay. But that would be the idea. It's like two and two when you're doing something like that. So, it'd be a total of four interior pages in those statements. Right. For this type of thing. Thank you. So, at this point, we have finished asking our questions. Um, we will move on to discussion, but I understand we do have a public comment. Is that correct? Yes, we do. Uh, can we have that at this point, please? Mr. Hi, uh, I appreciate the opportunity to speak. Sorry, I, I have a cold, which is why I'm not there in person. Um, I, I wanted to make one comment on the community services guide, but first I wanted to say that since moving to San Marino in 1996, I have never attended the egg hunt before and got to do it the first time. And it was a fantastic success. My two-year-old granddaughter, and uh, her parents had a fantastic time. And I just wanted to commend staff for such a fabulous event. Uh, it, was, it was a lot of fun and uh, I plan on going to it quite often now. Um, the, the comment I wanted to make regarding the community services guide, um, I, I think the, the design of it has very much improved. And I want to uh, thank Director Johnson for being so patient in taking the library board's recommendations uh, in several meetings and trying to incorporate uh, our requests to have the library have its own section in the in the community services guide and be more effective in explaining what those pieces are. I really appreciate her considering our input. Um, and I think the in terms of the design of the, the guide itself, which I received yesterday, it's very user friendly. And as someone who's been in marketing for many, many years, uh, the number of pages is very digestible. Um, I, it's, it's something we're going to be keeping in our hand, uh, for, for, for months to come, because we're going to be looking at some of the aquatic things for our, our granddaughter. And I just think the design is really great at the amount of money that's spent on design. It's, uh, it's so important because, uh, you can have a much thicker document, but if it's not well-designed, it's not going to get used as much. So I just wanted to pass along my thanks, 
uh, for Director Johnson for listening to us and for Dr. Marlowe for, for uh, trying to get this to happen for, for quite some time. So thank you very much to all concerned. Thank you for taking your time to be with us. Is there anybody else who is online and wanted to comment on this? Okay, so then let's move back to discussion so that we can give direction to staff on how to move forward with this. Um, Council Member Udy. I'm sorry, Council Member. Yeah, thank you. Um, and I appreciate Mr. Domar's comments because design is really important and to have an professional do it makes a ton of sense to me. And I think that is 16,000 of the $34,000 increase. So I'm okay with the total budget of 46A. Okay, thank you. Um, Council Member Huang. Yes, I can. I mean, I don't really like to, but I have to support. Thank you. <laughs> well, that's a reluctant yes. Thank you. Councilwoman Cheperoni and Fox. Um, I can support it. Uh, generally speaking, I would like to see it expanded to include um, seasonal information from the city generally, and perhaps a little bit more because I, I think that people might miss about the events, which I think this page in particular, which is exciting, has, has some of the community-wide events might be broken over two pages with highlighting some of that a little bit more so people don't flip through and even the old mill is like a you know on the last page a little so I would like to see those things that are community wide open to the public or fairly low cost or no cost um, highlighted more um, but otherwise I would support um, doing this my concern is long term just the amount of paper wasting so I'm interested to get some feedback after a year and see if people are liking this or they do want a postcard and digital version instead but I think we need to go ahead and get this out there in the community and people back have this on their radar. So I think it's an appropriate expense for the next budget year. And I'd like to see um, your analysis maybe this time next year as to as comments and feedback and whether you think it's getting out there or there's some other things we could do. Thank you. Thank you. Vice Mayor. Uh, I agree that this is an appropriate budget expenditure. Thank you. Um, I'm probably going to be somewhat of a minority thought on this and that um, I do like what Councilwoman Shepard Romy mentioned about all of the additional information since I have it in my hand, but that then becomes a cost issue. So I would be in favor of the hybrid that Councilmember Udy was talking about, you know, not as much color being used, but I think the direction is in the majority. So um, does that help? It looks like you have Councilwoman Shepard Romy looks confused. I, I don't know. Did, um, well, it's, I don't know where we were. Uh, I support doing it, just adding more to it, I guess, and what, what you know, trying to deal with the cost that way. And so I wasn't sure where we going back because I'm fine going to an inside that's not as well. But I didn't, I didn't know we had multiple options. So. Any, you can do whatever you want. <laughs> it is your budget. Yes. Uh, so I guess I would say perhaps there are two options that we could focus in on. One would be to accept director. Johnson's proposal as it is, which is full color throughout the full uh, document. And option two would be uh, full color covers with two color inside. Councilmember Yudi, is that what you had suggested during discussion? Yes, okay, I'm seeing you said that. So perhaps those are the two and options. A more lengthy inside seems to be the area that you were referencing. So so maybe if we could hear your thoughts on two separate issues. <laughs> Would you like full color throughout? And lengthier. And lengthier and cost. I was going to do lengthier as a standalone item. Okay. But yes, you can see that also. Uh, I was just thinking full color throughout as it is. Um, full color on the covers, but two color inside. And then, so which one of those would you prefer? And then a separate question of whichever one of those you end up deciding on, would you also be comfortable expanding it to include additional community information? You know, I, I don't think we have the costs with us today to really be able to address those two great questions. Typically more pages doesn't cost that much more money, but going to full, full color within does, but um, I, don't, I don't think Director Johnson had that answer. 
No, but at the moment, what you would have is you would have the total, you would have the higher cost because what we priced out for you is full exactly color for everything. Yes. So it wouldn't, unless we expand the number of pages at full color significantly, the number probably isn't going to go up that much. But if in concept, you wanted full color throughout the whole document um, and you wanted additional pages, then that's the number that we would put in the budget from May 27, then you could still change it. Vice Mayor, you have we're, some thoughts. We're both managing this. It is, it really, there's a budget request. We understand what the budget request is. We approve it or disapprove it. That's, that's, that's my thought because we can't sit here and say, well, uh, you know, let's let's over. We got a staff to figure that out. They made a proposal. Um, I, 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 we are giving them suggestions as to what to do, um, but we're just way over managing this right now. That's my opinion. Can I ask something? Um, is it possible to, you know, I know this, I mean, going to the high school kids or you know, our kids in our community and see if they get. I mean, come up with a program like this, maybe you can save some money and it might not be as professional, but it would be a good opportunity for these uh, high school kids, uh, students to showcase and maybe help them with their, their college application or future. Just, just as my two cents, thank you. Thank you. Um, so we have uh, probably as many diverse opinions of where we are on this as we do have Council members, um, what would be your pleasure in terms of what you want from us today? Oh, uh, let me offer a compromise. If each of you could give me one sentence with what you want, whatever that means to you. Okay, we're going to do the one sentence. Council member Yugi, one sentence of what you want. I like uh, Mr. Tall's comments. We hire competent staff and we empower them to do their job. Okay, Council Member Huang. I agree. Council Member Shepherd probably. <laughs> I agree, comma. <laughs> <laughs> Would you just add more community information? I will not manage the process or the color. Um, just uh, add in some of those seasonal or whatever, appropriate community um, information to this, I think it would be a wonderful one time. Okay, okay sorry. <laughs> Strike, I think it would be a wonderful one time. I agree with the budget proposal. Okay, and um, I agree with Councilman Shepard Romy. So okay. there you have it. So I've heard support for the number, we'll include it in the budget, and I've heard a request from a couple of you to add some additional pages. So we'll see if we can do about that. Great, thank you. We have what we need on that. <laughs> thank you. Um, I think we We've got one more area that we need to spend some time with, and that's on staff development. Um, on the handout that you received this morning, uh, it is on your last page for QA, and in your binder, it's page 64 of 110. Um, at this point, why don't we start with just seeing if you have questions that you would like clarification on? Council Member Huang. Yeah, I mean, what's the difference? You know, I mean, what kind of training? I mean, what kind of additional training compared to before? The primary increase uh, has to do with state conferences. That's a, the biggest impact allowing staff to uh, go to uh, conferences that are at the state level, which includes some travel. Thank you. Thank you. Um, Councilwoman Shepard Bowie, any questions? No, I fully support it. Councilmember Udi, any questions? No, no, no questions. Vice Mayor Talk, questions? This includes both recreation and library? Yes, it is. Thank you. No, thank you. I have no questions. Uh, let's bring it back then to discussion. Uh, Council Member Huang, discussion? Uh, we've just been advising on these. Okay. All right. Um, yeah, I can support it. Thank you. Okay, thank you. Councilman Shepard Romy? I can support it. And I, as um, others have said, I um, appreciate staff and, and think they should have the investment and training and bring back ideas that they might get at least. So I think it's money well spent. Thank you. Councilmember Member Udi? 
uh, better trained staff will be, provide better services. And I think generally our turnover is a little higher than we would like. So maybe this can help us keep some of our better people. Thank you, Vice Mayor Tom. For all the previous reasons stated, yes. Thank you. And um, I will just wrap it up by saying recreation and library um, demand creativity. Um, I'm delighted we have longer term staff in place to put this investment into. So it feels like wholehearted support from the council. Thank you. We certainly have what we need on that one. Thank you. I think now it's just anything else that you might have comments about in the actual budget. And that is our last issue. Does anyone have anything else that they'd like to comment on with the budget that's presented to you today? I'll give you a, a minute to look over. And if there is silence, we will then move. I'm sorry. Um, Finance Director Chung was about to cry because he has some slides. If you'd like to take oh, all oh, our slides. Put all that work in our so slides. sorry. Uh, no. With great apologies. Finance the numbers. Director Chung, please take us through Narrative your numbers. glorious slides. It please. can't be a budget without talking specific numbers. So, please. is this on the HR department? <laughs> <laughs> that was last, that was last week. Uh, um, so, we do have four more slides here. And instead of going through each uh, items, of course, as you know, that there's been quite a bit of e increased decreases all over the service department budget. Um, I just wanted to, instead of going through the four slides, because the the budget numbers are in your packets, but there's a couple items I wanted to highlight with council. Uh, number one is that uh, next year we're proposing to uh, um, reorganize, at least on a budget structure, to pull out and create a community services division or yeah, division. Um, before it used to be just rec, rec and uh, library. Now we're trying to pull it out into having a third division called um, community services admin division. And basically what that is is that's the director, the analyst, and I believe a rec coordinator. Um, just pull it. So we're just moving budget around. Um, it, it actually does make more sense after my conversation with the director that um, allocation wise, we used to allocate by percentages. This is more, uh, more straightforward on the budget side. So I know it's hard to look historically, but it does make sense moving forward. And once, of course, after year two, you'll see more data in regards to the actuals and it'll be easier comparison. But just wanted to highlight to the council that that's one dip, big difference we're, we're making to the budget uh, next year. In this division, as you just talked about the guide, this is where the actual cost of the guide is reflected. And from what I'm hearing from the council, you uh, have approved that $46,000 for the guide. So um, I'm not gonna make any changes on their budget that's proposed um, in the packet. So there's no changes here. Um, that's the number one highlight. The other items I wanted to bring up was um, because the council regards to the option one and two that was um, uh, presented to you today, the current budget that's proposed to you, the numbers that are in front of you um, included the $313,000. What I'm gonna do is from the direction council, I'm gonna pull that number out of the budget and add back only $40,000 so that when I come back to you on May 27th, that only 40,000 is reflected. So just so that um, I wanted to um, show the council what that actually means for the rec department's budget overall, is if you go to page 54 of the budget packet, Page 54 of the packet, on the top, there should be a table. I know there's multiple tables, but the main focus is on the top table here, the operating budget summary table. This is for recreation division's budget. And if, if you look at their bottom um, total by type, on the right side, it says proposed budget fiscal year 22-23. Department's budget, which includes personnel services and supplies for next year is $1.7 million. As I mentioned, that includes that three hundred and uh, $13,000. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull that number out and only add 40,000. And when I come back to you on May 27th, the recreations budget is actually going to be going down what's proposed for next year. Um, and so it should actually be going down by here, some number of 51% actually. So at, at the end of the day, uh, what we're proposing for the, rec the department is a decrease in their proposed budget next year. And I'll have those numbers for you 
in the staff report in the staff report for the May 27th meeting. Um, I just wanted to um, highlight that for the council. With that said, unless the council wants us to go to the specifics of various increases and decreases, we could do that. But um, if if not, because it seems like you touched on the high, the important budget increases for both recreation and library. Um, I just want a direction on council if you want to go into that detail or if you're okay with us with what you've um, directed staff on the budget process. I think we're okay, but I will ask aloud if any council member would like more detail. I don't know, nothing that can be asked. Hey, I don't see any response there, well, so I, I guess I do. Um, I'm going to refer you to page 55 at the bottom. And that's the recreation community events and enrichment, which I think if you look at the, it has the increase of 284, $284,385. That's the home for the holidays overall budget. So it's not a $300,000 number. I'm just trying to, and so that this is the section that will change or, or that's going to be adjusted. The 40 will still be in. So I, this was confused. I know it is written some places as 316 or, or whatever it's it is, 361, excuse me. Yes. And then, but then here it's 284. We have an answer for that. Okay. Give me yeah, that. It answer. doesn't include personnel costs, it's just materials and supplies. I see. In this table. Right. Okay. So that the 361 was the 315. Did, yeah. Did, oh, pardon me. The 351 is revenue. 61. Sorry. Increase. The very first line item, that's revenue? Yeah, the, our, our budget slides are laid out a little bit differently because we do have revenue. All the other departments you see are all um, expense departments. Right. So our the top half of our slides right. that you would see are revenue, the bottom are expenses. Okay, so it was, you were expecting $361,000 in revenue? Additional, yeah. Okay. Yep, and, and the majority of that was from uh, the the light festival with uh, additional um, revenue from other special events because our attendance is going up. So we are anticipating. You're you're talking about the increase there of the 361. Is that where you're referencing? Right. The total the increase is 580. 585. Yeah. yeah. Okay. For so, overall for the department. Yeah. Right. So if we don't do the program yeah. as envisioned in this year, both the revenue will be reduced as well as this section, which is just the supplies, well, and, and even the percent. Yeah. So it's gonna affect Yeah, and Paul was products. explaining that we will absolutely pull all, them, all of that out. Uh, yes, council member, the revenue, there will be a decrease of revenue of $333,000 because of the home for the holidays. We're pulling that out for the revenue piece. And then the expenditure side as well, um, 287 that you mentioned in the uh, page 55 of the community event, Enrichment, that's where that service and supplies budget resides. And as director mentioned, that the other portion is that personnel 30,000 okay. to get you to that 315 cost of the home for the holiday. Got it. Thank you very much. That helps clarify because there's some parts that I didn't know. So it's all, it's all those. Thank you. Council members, any other section that you would like more information on? Okay. Generally, first on the recreation division, page 54, 110. Uh, the division will no longer be purchasing class can insurance. Where is the insurance for that going from or coming from? Is it the other contract services? Right in the middle, it says a decrease of $12,175 to cost center. As lower credit card fees are expected, and the division will no longer be purchasing class camp insurance. Uh, that was a recommendation from our CJPAI advisor that we no longer need to be doing that. Oh, because it's covered. Because it's already covered under general liability. Okay. The second question is we've talked about the adjustment from uh, preschool from our focus to that of the schools. We don't have a plan for the schools yet. So the preschool is included in this budget. Okay. Yes. Thank you. Any other additional questions on the budget 
sections? I had one. I'm sure. sorry. Um, also on page 55, the middle of the page, it's specifically the recreation adult budget. And I believe you're reducing it, sorry, yeah, see, um, by about $30,000 because of uh, fewer trips. And I hate to not have us plan as many trips because I think that a lot of these were still impacted by COVID. And I noticed, for example, there's just one senior trip um, for the summer season plan in your new brochure. And I know that a lot of seniors uh, appreciate kind of more than one because there is a diversity of interest in the group. So some might, um, for example, this is to go to the Academy of Motion Pictures, but others might do some, um, might be interested in, you know, other things that have been successes in the past. And I would hate to see that budget reduced so significantly um, until we get to a non-COVID uh, impacted year. I think our strategy was to, um, uh, we spend a lot of time planning them and then they get canceled. So let's establish demand uh, before we, and, and really get a more realistic um, um, budget put forward this year and, and build from there as, deba as demand increases. So this would be, right, so, but my, so this would be just one offering one offering per season. I'm just trying to understand what you're going quarterly. To I believe, yeah, I'm just one verifying it's quarterly. quarterly versus I think we were offering maybe monthly or more frequent and we were planning them, them canceling. So we pulled back to quarterly. Yes, quarterly trips and then two special trips. We've heard from the community that some of them want to go holiday shopping, but they don't want to drive all the way to like uh, Fashion Island and Newport Beach or those types of places. So we incorporated two uh, special trips with like some shopping opportunities for some of the older adults that don't want to shop anywhere over there too far. So it's six total. Um, the actual trips we did have one a month, but it really hasn't been um, really hasn't been in high demand. All right, thank you. Then I appreciate the, that you've done the research. I was just concerned with dropping too many programs, but it sounds like you have enough, and we'll see. Thank you. Okay, uh, any other budget comments from council members? Uh, not hearing any more. Uh, do we have any written communication or public writings for distribution? Um, this is not a public writing, but I would like to share an appreciation. Um, I was the guest yesterday of the San Gabriel Valley Public Affairs Network mayor's reception and um, they invited all of the mayors in the San Gabriel Valley and many other electives. Our, our own San Marino resident, Tom Santley, is on the board and one of the founding members. And after meeting with uh, many of my colleagues for two years, it was nice to see what they look like. <laughs> uh, anything else on that topic? Is there anyone wishing to speak at this time? If so, um, I just wanted to congratulate the team in the rec department that had an outstanding new event, um, as well as I, I saw many members, um, you know, the, our executive team and other staff members um, attending the uh, San Marino Great Egg Hunt, for lack of a better. Um, so congratulations for putting that together this year. It was exciting and a lot of people enjoyed it. So I wanted to thank you all for that and recognize the um, excellent work by, from Eddie and his team. I know Angie and, and I'm sure everybody that was there worked very hard and very early. I know who was there <laughs> at 5 a.m. and I hope I got there early at 8, 7.30 or 8. Um, but it went long and, and uh, a huge turnout. So congratulations. And also to recognize the coffee with a cop that was down at the west end of the city last Sunday. Um, was seemed like there were a lot of officers and a lot of community members and so very well attended and Kind of a fun thing and also to draw attention to a new business down there. So thank you for arranging that, Chief. Thank you. Uh, anyone wishing to speak with public comment? Give one moment just to see if there's a raised hand. Yeah, no request for comment. Thank you. Uh, are there any items council would like to see on a future agenda? I hear silence and uh, do any council members have a special adjournment? Again, uh, we are quiet, so I will now recess the closed session. Thank you. <laughs>